Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to make a beverage carrier. And this is not just your average beverage carrier. You can also drape this over a bike frame, wear it as a shoulder bag, or even just carry it with the handle. Going along with all these different ways to wear it, you can also put a ton of different styles of bottles in the holders. We're packing a ton of features on this bag and including sewing techniques that you can use in all of your sewing projects. So if you are new to sewing, you should have no problem following the easy step-by-step -step tutorial. With all this being said, if you are new to the channel, grab that printable pattern and let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you'll need one yard for your main fabric, and I recommend using canvas, denim, twill. These are all really durable fabrics and they're easy to work with. And I'm actually gonna be using a mixture of these fabrics. I'll be using a heavyweight twill and upholstery fabric and also a random fabric I found. It's more of a decorative canvas. So like always get creative with it. Use a fabric that's really gonna make your design come to life. You'll need one yard for your secondary fabric, and this is gonna be your lining, so I recommend using a lighter weight cotton or polyester. Anything on the lighter weight side will work because once these layers start coming together, it can get pretty bulky if you're not using a lighter weight fabric. You'll need two nine inch zippers. I'm gonna be cutting mine off a zipper roll. This is a great way to go to get precise zippers without any waste. We will be snipping the zipper ends, so you wanna get nine inches or bigger. You'll need two to three yards of one inch webbing. And the two to three is optional based on if you're making the shoulder strap. If you're not making the shoulder strap, you'll only need about a quarter yard for the handle on top and the D-ring loops on the back. Going along with that one inch webbing, you'll need two to six D-rings, two lobster clasps, and one strap slider. And again, you want these to be the same width as your webbing. So since we're using one inch webbing, we want all our hardware to be one inch width. You'll need 10 inches of Velcro. We're using this Velcro to attach it to a bike. So if you're not gonna be attaching it to a bike, you can skip this supply. And I'm also gonna be using Velcro loops. I highly recommend looking into these. A lot of the times they're used to tighten up a bundle of cords, but I found it works perfect for attaching it to your frame. You'll need six to eight magnetic buttons. And this is where you can kind of customize it to your taste. I'm gonna be using the hidden magnetic snap closures. These are the ones you sew in between the layers and they're totally hidden. But but you can totally change it up and get different types of buttons. You don't even have to get magnetic buttons. I just really like the way these ones work. It's totally up to you and how you want yours to look, but I really recommend looking into it. Lastly, you'll need your pattern. This pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super simple to use. All you have to do is download it, print it out, tape it together, and you're ready to go. Before you tape it together, the best thing to do is to cut off the top and one of the side edges. This is gonna allow you to overlap the pages for a perfectly aligned pattern. And with all your supplies gathered and your pattern printed out, it's time to move into cutting. And after taping your pattern together, it should look like this. For the best results, I recommend checking your printer alignment. And once you have it all taped together, we're gonna cut on the outside of the black line. After cutting, you should end up with eight zipper side panels, four cut out of your secondary fabric, and four cut out of your main fabric. 12 bottom bottle pocket panels, six cut out of your secondary fabric, and six cut out of your main fabric. Two flat panels cut out of your main fabric on the fold, four main zipper pocket panels, two cut out of your secondary fabric, and two cut out of your main fabric. Four main bottle pocket panels, two cut out of your main fabric, and two cut out of your secondary fabric. And lastly, one foundation panel cut out of your main fabric. Moving on to assembly, we're gonna start by grabbing the flat panels. And the first thing we're gonna do is add our magnetic snaps to the flat panels. And as you can see, we cut the guides out on our pattern for easier marking. Lay the panels out flat with wrong sides facing up, Line the pattern up on one half of the panel and mark the guided areas with chalk. Do this for both panels. After marking, grab your magnetic snaps and I'm gonna be using the sew on magnetic bag closures. These ones can be a little bit trickier to install, but in the end, they'll look really nice. We'll need six sets total and be sure you keep track of each set. What I'm doing is laying the entire set down and then taking the opposite half and putting it off to the side. With the magnets in place and organized, we're gonna stitch around the outside edge for all of these magnetic snaps. And I find it's best to use a presser foot that gets you close to that magnetic button and also adjusting your needle position. And you'll wanna keep these adjustments when it comes to sewing all of the magnets. After finishing, double check both sides, make sure you're happy with the stitches and everything looks nice and even. 
Next, fold the panel in half on the fold with right sides together. Grab the pattern, and as you can see, there's a quarter inch seam allowance on the top openings and the sides. Since the top openings look like triangles and it's a little bit trickier, I recommend cutting out the seam allowance, laying the pattern over the panel, and marking out the seam allowance with chalk. This will give you an easy guide to follow when it comes to sewing these top openings. Repeat this process for both of the flat panels and then we're going to stitch directly on top of that chalk line and the diagonal edges at the bottom. And you don't have to mark these out with chalk. If you feel comfortable stitching at a quarter inch seam allowance along these edges, feel free to do so. And again, sew just the bottom diagonal edges. After stitching, find the side seam opening and pull the right sides out. It may take a little bit of maneuvering, but once you have the right sides out, we're going to seal off the side seams by folding the edges over a quarter inch and placing the right sides together. Add a pin and repeat this step for the other three edges. With all the sides lined up and pinned, we're going to top stitch the entire bottom edge and all of the top openings. And for this step, I'm going to be using an edge presser foot. This is going to help me get that nice even stitch all the way along that bottom edge. And depending on what type of edge presser foot you're using, you can adjust them so you can really customize it to go with your project. These top openings can be a little bit tricky, so once you get down to that bottom point, I recommend taking your time, slowing it down, and making sure you keep that even stitch all the way through. After finishing top stitching both of the panels, just double check to make sure everything is looking good, and from here we're going to clean up that top edge by surging it. If you don't have a serger, I recommend using a zigzag stitch or something so that way you can prevent fraying on that top edge. And the fun thing about these patterns is that you can actually customize these to fit whatever type of drink you're carrying. So definitely have some fun customizing this flap. You can place these off to the side and grab your bottom bottle pocket panels. The pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance on the side edges. So lay your main panels out with right sides facing up. Locate the panels cut out of the secondary fabric and place them over top with right sides together. When you have the panels lined up, we're going to stitch the side seams at a quarter inch seam allowance. And since we're sewing six different panels, try to keep these as uniform as possible as you're sewing. After finishing up, we're going to pull the right sides out for each one of these panels. And again, as you're pulling the right sides out throughout these panels, just double check the width to make sure it's the same throughout all of these panels. Once you have all the right sides out and you double check the width, we're going to add a top stitch to both of the side edges for each one of the panels. And for the best end results, try to keep the depth of that top stitch the same. After finishing up, double check all of your panels, place them off to the side, and grab your foundation panel. Next, we're going to be adding the webbing in the handle to our main foundation panel. Starting with the handle in the center of the panel, find the webbing placement guide, grab your 1 inch webbing, cut a 12 to 14 inch strip, and this is another step where you can customize this handle to your preference. The longer you make it, the more it's going to pop up and stick out and be a little bit easier to grab. You can play around with the webbing, move it back and forth, and find that sweet spot that's going to work best for you. But for the video, I'm going to try to keep mine as flat as possible. Once you're happy with how the handle looks, we're going to move it over to the fabric and make sure you keep it in the exact center of that panel. Grab two 1 inch D-rings and these are going to go on both sides of the handle. And a quick tip when it comes to the D-rings, you can use different styles. As long as you can clip to it, it's good to go. Feed the webbing through the D-ring opening. Fold the webbing over once so the right side of the webbing is facing the right side of the foundation panel. With both D-rings on and the webbing in place, we're going to stitch a box stitch around the outside edge. And try to keep this as close as you can to that D-ring. I'm doing about a 1 inch box stitch. That means I'm going 1 inch in both directions. Feel free to add more than just a box stitch. Feel free to add a couple bar tacks or an X stitch. The more stitches you add, the stronger that handle will be. Grab the pattern and we're going to find the rest of our webbing placement guides. Before we chalk them out, we're going to flip the panel so the wrong side is facing up. Place the pattern on top of the panel. And if you want, you can do this the same way we did the magnetic snap guides. You can cut out the areas and mark with chalk. But we're just going to roll the sides up and get the best possible marking as we can. Mark both sides and try to keep both sides as even as possible. I like to roll it over in the middle to make sure that each side lines up. Because these will be aligning with your frame. So you can actually adjust these if you want. If you have a different style frame but these are primarily based off a 90 degree and a 45 degree angle, so you should be good to go. But like always, customize it to make it more useful for you. Grab your 1 inch webbing, and I'm using a different style of webbing. This one's a little bit thinner, so it's going to be easier to sew down. And overall, less bulky. Cut 4 5 inch strips. 
and lay them out on the chalked areas. Grab four D-rings, and these are just standard one inch D-rings. Feed the webbing through the D-ring and then fold both of the webbing ends over, giving you nice clean edges. And the big thing here, you want to make sure the webbing ends are at least one inch away from the edge of the foundation panel. Once you have it lined up, we're going to place a pin and repeat this process for our other webbing strips. From here, we're going to add a box stitch just like we did in the previous step. When it comes to the webbing strips in the corner, just make sure you keep them at a 45 degree angle. And for all of them, you want the D-ring to be as close to the outside edge as you can get it. Like always, feel free to add more than just the box stitch. Feel free to add a bar tack stitch or an X stitch. Fold the panel in half just to double check to make sure everything lines up correctly. And these D-rings are so you can attach it to your bike frame. So feel free to adjust them along the side edge to really make it custom to your bike frame. Or if you're not even making this for a bike, you don't have to add these D-rings. But anyways, next we're going to add a few magnets along the bottom and side edge. We're pretty much just going to place them on the opposite sides of the D-rings. I'm only adding two just to show you how to do it in the video and save time, but feel free to add more all along the side edges. With your magnets in position, we're going to chalk around the outside. Repeat this process for both sides. And just like the first step, we're going to stitch around the outside edge of the magnet. Once all the magnets are sewn on, pull up on the handle and see if the magnets come together. If both sides snap together and the edges are lined up, that means the magnets are in the correct position and you're good to go. From here, you can either add more magnets or you can place this panel off to the side and grab your main bottle pocket panels. Separate the main fabric from the secondary fabric. Place the secondary fabric off to the side. Find the flat button placement guide. We're going to be marking these guides on the main fabric. And just like the first step, we're going to cut the guides out on the pattern. With the guides cut out, we're going to separate our main panels and flip the main panels so that the wrong side's facing up. Place the pattern on top of the panel and mark out the guides. And this is where we're going to grab the second half of our magnetic buttons from doing the flap panel. You want these magnets to be in the same order as the magnets on the flap. By doing this, you're going to ensure that these flaps will stick together. And from here, we're going to stitch around the outside edge. Take your time and try to make it as neat as possible. And the first thing you want to do after finishing up that stitch is grab your flap panel and make sure it sticks to that bottle panel. These magnets can be a little bit fussy if you're not using the correct sides, so keeping them organized throughout the project is very key. So take the flat panels off, grab the pattern once again, locate the bottom bottle placement guide on the bottom edge, place the pattern on the right side of your panel, and mark all three of the placement guides on both main bottle pocket panels. Just like with the magnetic snaps, you want these to be as even as possible on both sides. From here, we're going to grab the bottom bottle pocket panels. These are the ones we already completed in the previous step, and we're going to place the right sides together on top of these placement guides. Make sure you let the edge hang off a quarter inch. Grab the secondary fabric and place it over top of the main fabric with right sides together. From here, we're going to stitch both the top and bottom edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving the side edges open. And to keep everything in place, I like to pin down the inside panels. It's just an easy, quick step to ensure you're going to get the best results. After stitching both the top and bottom edges, we're going to locate the side opening and pull the right sides out. Repeat this process for both of your bottle pocket panels. From here, we're going to do the same thing we did for the bottom bottle panels. We're going to line up the panels on both the top and the bottom edge and add a top stitch. When it comes to the sides with the bottom panels, we're going to want to make sure we keep those facing straight as we stitch through that edge. This is just to make sure we don't actually stitch them down to the actual panel itself. So just take your time and try to make this stitch as neat as possible. I always like to match the thread color to the fabric color I'm using, but from here we're going to grab the pattern one more time, locate both of the bottle pocket stitch guides, and chalk these guides out on both of our panels. And you really want to make sure these markings are accurate or it's not going to line up evenly on the main panel. And with the stitch guide marked, you can place these panels off to the side and grab our main zipper pocket panel. For the next step, we'll only need the main fabric, so place the secondary fabric off to the side. And we're going to be marking out the bottle pocket stitch guide on our main fabric. I like to start by marking the bottom edge, folding over the top, marking it all the way across the top edge, and then connecting the top and bottom. We will be using that top edge as a guide, so I highly recommend marking that out too. After marking both main panels, we're going to grab our main bottle pocket panels. 
Starting with one of each panel, we're going to line up the bottle pocket stitch guides. Place the main bottle panel on top of the main zipper panel, lining up the chalked edge. Add a few pins and then move the bottle panel over so the other two stitch guides line up. Move to the sides and line both of the side edges up. And lastly, we're going to move towards the bottom and we're going to line our bottom panels up in the center of each one of those sections. And again, make sure the edges are lined up. Double check to make sure each panel in the section is even and from here we're going to stitch just the stitch guides and the outside edges. You'll want to add a nice tack stitch on both sides of the stitch guide and when it comes to the outside edges you're going to want to stitch as close as you can to the outside edge. Repeat this process for the opposite panel and next we're going to grab the pattern, mark out the flat placement guide. This is one that you can actually adjust this placement guide based on if you made any adjustments to your flat panel. The main thing you want to keep in mind is to make sure the magnets line up. So what I like to do is throw the flaps on the magnets and just double check to make sure that when I stitch that flap to that guide, everything's still going to line up. Place the right sides of the flap to the right sides of the main zipper panel. Make sure the top of the flap is facing up and we're going to stitch directly on top of our surged areas at a quarter inch seam allowance. After finishing the flap stitch, we're going to fold the flaps down, make sure they line up. Again, you just have to always double check. With the flaps down, we're going to push that top edge as flat as we can get it and add a top stitch. And this is a top stitch I highly recommend. It's really going to make that top edge of the flap look professional. It's also going to add a little bit of extra strength, so that's something to keep in mind. But for now, you can place these panels off to the side and grab your zipper side panels. Separate the main fabric from the secondary fabric. Grab two seven and a quarter inch zippers. And this panel is designed to be the same width as a zipper. So just double check with the zipper you're using. If the width is different, you can always adjust the panel to match the width of your zipper. Place the secondary fabric on the wrong side of the zipper and the main fabric on the right side of the zipper. And again, if your panels don't match up perfectly with the zipper, you can always trim them after sewing. The zipper I'm using is cut off of a roll, so you have to add the zipper train. So at this point, you're going to add the zipper train before you start stitching. Slide the zipper train on and move it to the center of the zipper. With everything lined up and ready to go, we're going to stitch the zipper ends at a quarter inch seam allowance. After stitching, pull the wrong sides of the panels together, lining up the outside edges of the panel, and from here, we're going to add a top stitch. Just take your time when you're stitching over the zipper track. If done correctly, these should be the same width as your foundation panel. Grab your complete main zipper panel and the secondary fabric. Locate the zipper edge on the top of the panel. This is where we're going to be lining up our zipper. Starting with the main zipper pocket assembly, place the right side of the zipper to the right side of the assembly, and the secondary fabric on top, sandwiching that zipper in between both of the main zipper panels. Pin the layers and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Unfold the panels so the wrong sides are together. Line up the main and secondary fabric edges and add a top stitch to that top edge. This stitch will be front and center, so try to make it as neat as possible. After finishing up the top stitch, double check both sides to make sure the edges line up, and from here you can place these panels off to the side and grab your foundation panel. Locate the main pocket placement guides on both sides of the foundation panel. Chalk the guides out on both sides of the handle. Grab both of your pocket assemblies. And before you stitch them on, you always want to lay them over top to make sure everything lines up correctly. The bottom edges for the main fabric, secondary fabric, and foundation layer should all line up. If it's looking good, we're going to start with one side, flip it over the placement guide with right sides together, and stitch directly on top of that placement guide. Flip the pocket assembly back down, check the bottom edge to make sure everything lines up. If it doesn't, you can always move it and try it again. Move to the other side, grab the opposite pocket, and do the same exact thing. Flip it over the placement guide and then stitch with right sides together. Flip the pocket assembly down and double check to make sure all of the sides line up. If everything is looking good, we're going to jump towards the center and add a top stitch by stitching directly on top of our side panels and our zipper. And at this stage, the pockets can easily get in the way, so just take your time. After finishing up the top stitch, just double check one more time to make sure the back is looking good, the sides are looking good. And real quick before we move on, if your bottom edges are not lining up perfectly, you can quickly snip them all so they line up. This will not really affect the overall outcome of this bag, it's just going to make this next step easier. But other than that, the next step is to add bias tape around the outside edge, and I'm going to run you through a few different methods for adding professional bias tape. 
The first method is using a bias tape making kit. In this technique, you make your own double-sided bias tape to the size and fabric you want to use. All you do is cut your strips, feed it through your folder, and press it when it comes out the folder. It's very easy to do, and you get to customize the bias tape to your exact measurements. The second technique is using a double fold bias tape binder. This is the most efficient technique. You cut your strips, feed it through your binder, and sew it directly to your raw edge. And the last technique is using pre-made double fold bias tape. You are limited to colors, but it's very easy to use. You fold it over the edge and stitch it down. The biggest thing to keep in mind is you want to keep this in one strip all the way around. I'm going to be using the double fold bias tape attachment. If you plan on making a lot of bags, I highly recommend looking into this. It gives the nicest end product and cuts down production time. The one I'm using mounts directly into the machine by replacing the presser foot. I found that this is one of the best ways to go. It gives you the most accurate double fold bias tape strip and overall just really fun to use. But any of these methods work great, so find one that works best for you. Double check both sides to make sure you got all the layers stitched within that double fold bias tape. And real quick before we move on, if you don't want to use double fold bias tape, I'm going to show you a quick method that you can avoid using it. You're going to want to cut one extra foundation layer. You're going to lay it over top with the right sides together. Again, this step is done before adding the bias tape, but you stitch around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving a small opening in the side. From this opening, you're going to pull out the right sides, poke out all of the corners, add a top stitch around the outside edge, and lastly seal off the bottom opening. This is just another quick way of finishing off the bag without adding the bias tape. If you added the bias tape, you don't have to worry about any of this. Next, we're going to quickly make the strap. This is optional. You don't have to make this. We're going to grab our one inch webbing and cut a two yard strip. This can be adjusted to your exact measurements, but I'd recommend starting with a two yard strip. Then we're going to grab our strap slider, feed it onto either end of our webbing and slide it down to about a foot, foot and a half. Grab one of your lobster clasps, feed it onto the same end you fed the strap slider onto, pull a little bit of slack out the strap slider, feed the webbing back through the strap slider from the bottom, from the far opening back down to the nearest opening. And at this point, we're gonna pull the end out just enough so that way we can roll it over and add a tack stitch. Feel free to pull more slack out the strap slider so you have a little bit more room to work with. Sometimes it can be tricky trying to get the sewing machine in that small area. Just like that, you have one side of your strap already complete. We're going to move to the opposite side, grab your second lobster clasp, feed the webbing through the clasp opening, roll the webbing end over once, and just like in the previous step, we're going to add our tack stitch. Sometimes the webbing can be pretty thick, so just take your time as you're sewing. Also, feel free to add more than just a couple bar tack stitches. Moving on to the final stage, we're going to add our branding, and feel free to add it anywhere throughout the bag. I like to add it in areas where I can clip different things to. I'm using just standard branded leather tags that are attached with double sided rivets. And another fun little thing, if you're using this with glass bottles, you should definitely find somewhere you can clip a bottle opener. But anyways, before we move on to the demonstration, we're going to flip it to the opposite side, grab our Velcro loops and loop them around two of the D-rings. If you're not planning on attaching this to a bike, you don't have to worry about these Velcro loops. And at this point, your beverage carrier is complete. The cool thing about this bag is that you can fit all different types of cans. You can fit the skinny tall, you can fit the tall wide, and you can also fit a standard can. Or you can mix it up and add one of each. I found the pocket was a perfect place to keep the strap when you're not using it. It's super simple just to take it off your bike, clip on, and keep moving. When it comes to adding it to the frame, you can actually move it up and down the frame anywhere you would like. And simply just feed the Velcro through the D-rings and around your frame. I recommend moving it up and down the frame and finding that sweet spot that works best for you when you're riding. Once you reach your destination, it's super easy to take off. You unclip the Velcro and take off. There you have it. Your six pack beverage carrier is complete thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel and like always if it doesn't turn out great the first try these patterns take practice once you get into making bags over and over you start to use the same steps and you perfect those steps and all your bags really look better and these patterns are so great to use as a foundation because once you start making them over and over you can start adding in different pockets and it really sparks the design concepts in your brain 
to add on to these patterns and make them your own. And one more thing, don't forget to tag and follow me on Instagram. I love to see how your projects turn out. Just tag me at Proper Fit Clothing and I'll check it out. But other than that, I'm gonna keep the videos coming at you, so I'll see you next time.